today. Thank you for coming and being a part of uh, the Goofy Gums, Brother Daniel Gums, of course, Sister Marilyn Gums, our live stream today, and it's focused on the topic, which you would have seen already, eight things you need to know before becoming a children's ministry leader. Now, today is a little comical. Actually, I think it's a little comical because a lot of this, I believe, uh, we know. A lot of this, I believe, um, well, if not, you're about to find out. <laughs> Nevertheless. So welcome to the live stream with uh, Daniel Gums, Brother Daniel Gums, a.k.a. the Goofy Gums. Uh, but if you would, notice in my pinned message, I do have our Goofy Gums YouTube channel listed. If you would, before you are done, when you get ready to leave this live stream, go ahead and click that link. Go to the Goofy Gums YouTube channel. We are looking at getting more subscribers. The great thing is, is this video will be on that channel and there are other content already there and weekly, daily almost, we're putting up more content. You can grab more information from the Goofy Gums. Uh, and of course, I have different content that we put up there from different kids services and object lessons and things like that too. I think uh, the kids would love it just the same. So get your kids to subscribe. When you're there, hit that bell for the uh, alerts. That way you'll be made aware of any new uh, uploads that we put into the channel as well. So in Jesus' name, Brother, Brother Daniel Gems here. I'm going to get right into it. <clears throat> Hopefully I bring some smiles to your face. I will share it on my main page my personal page as well, um, but we're going to dive right into it. So today, Brother Gums is sharing with you eight things you need to know before becoming a children's ministry leader. Now, in whatever capacity that you work with kids, if you're a children's ministry leader, if you are, um, I think, a matter of fact, whether you're Sunday school, whatever the case is, you are a leader. And so this is this pertains to everybody. If you would just do me one thing, like the post and, and put a comment in the in the comment section where you're from. California, maybe the city, but mainly state, or if you're from another country, put, put that in too. Brother Gums would like to know where you're calling from, where you're coming in from. Okay, so eight things you need to know before becoming a children's ministry leader. Number one, leading in children's ministry is not primarily about kids. Nope. It's first working with your leadership, getting everyone all on the same page for maximum results. Don't forget it. Then it's working with parents with constant communication and relationship. It is of utmost importance. Your success will involve the intertwining of yourselves <clears throat> with leadership, with parents, to the benefit of the children. Amen? All right, that was number one. I mean, that was quick and easy, right? Uh, number two, diving in, there's eight things. Number two, there is always, always, and if, you can, and if you can relate to this one, there's always one parent assigned to be an hour or more late to pick up your kid from special events. Always. <laughs> now, that's, that's the comical piece that I'm talking about. And what that is, is typically, this is mainly, uh, you'll notice more, uh, they're happening at larger events, conferences, and things like that. However, it can happen on a Sunday morning after kids' church, too. My advice is to smile big, but be certain to set expectations, if at all possible. The best thing is, is for everybody to keep a good spirit, to be happy about it. Parents alike have to understand that you're investing your time and, and you're loving on their kids, etc. But if you can set that expectation, you'll still find the one that thinks it's, you know, one quick story. Let me not stay too long on it. But one quick story. We we're doing an event and we had a, a, a child that, man, it, it seemed like they were going to cry. I think we were over a half hour into everybody else being gone. One child left. And I just felt so bad. We had numbers. We tried to reach out, call them. No answer. An hour later. Finally, we got to the parents. It was a large event, over 2,000 people. Finally found the parent and happily gave the child back to mom and dad. And they could see their child was not happy. <laughs> Nevertheless, keep a smile. Try your best to set expectations of, if at all possible. Okay, so if you're still, if you're just jumping on, uh, go ahead and put in the comment section where you are chiming in from, what state, what country, etc. I'd like to know. Brother Gums would love to know where you're chiming in from. Number three, there's eight. Number three, church 
Children's church ministry is hard, but easy when done in love. Understand what I'm saying. It's easy when it's done in love. When people don't have a call to work with children, etc., they can get frustrated easy. I mean, I appreciate all volunteers, many hands, many hands make, make light work, um, but you can tell those that it's just not quite for them. But when done in love, <clears throat> it is easy. Should you ever feel a burnout coming, now listen, reach out to leadership and devise a plan. A break is healthy because it is not easy all the time. It, it's easier with love, but it, it, it is hard work. But a break is healthy. Uh, a break doesn't have to be a long one, but we do not need to have any volunteer casualties. All who give up their time, talent, and treasure is great gain in the kingdom. We love you for loving on the kiddos. We appreciate all volunteers. Amen? And that's probably ringing from all leadership everywhere in Jesus' name. Number four, senior church leadership can be key to successful children's church ministry. I touched on it uh, just, just here a quick second ago, um, for a quick second. To have the most success, you must have open and constant communication readily available at your disposal. And to have that, you have to be the initiative. You have to take the initiative. Your leadership, number one, is busy. You know this already. Working on other areas that require or need their attention. If you reserve the most important times in reaching up and out to them, they will sense the respect and responsibility you have at handling all things that don't need their attention. And so that when you do come to them, undivided, you're getting their attention because you're going to them with the utmost important things, all the other things you can handle, right? This is true leadership. Number five, there's eight. Number five, people can be very creative in saying no to serving. <laughs> no to serving, okay? This takes us into what uh, would be a whole nother training in, in and of itself. Uh, most certainly, however, not today, we're, we're, we're not going to do it, but just be privy to it. People can be very creative in saying no to serving. We love many hands which make light work, but nevertheless, uh, not everybody is, is a thumbs up. Let's, let's work in kids ministry, especially nursery, right? All right, in Jesus' name. Number six, you will be part of shaping the very type of faith that Jesus desires to be shaped and molded in the lives of children. Mark 10, 16 says, He, Jesus, took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and blessed them. What an honor. What an honor to bless children. You're shaping the very faith, the very type of faith that Jesus wants to be in them, wants to have in them. Amen? Number seven. The Spirit of the Lord can work powerfully in the lives of children, just as in the lives of adults. And I'm sure most of you know this, but I have to make sure you understand it, working in children's ministry. In other words, there's no difference. I have children who pray for me, and God heals me. I have faith-filled children that I call up. There's a little, a little girl that I call up. And she just prays for me and God has healed my back before. Small container or big container, it doesn't matter. The Lord fills them both. The Lord fills them both in Jesus' name. And number eight. Now lastly, real quick again, uh, go ahead and put in the comment section where you're coming from. Looks like we got a bunch of you putting those comments in. I'd love to know where you're coming. Last, last, last week we had people from Costa Rica, uh, I think uh, uh, Europe. We had some people, of course, here in the States. But stay, say what state you're, you're, uh, you're watching in from. Whatever the case is, it'd be great to see where you're coming from. Number eight, and the last one, too. The eight things you need to know before coming, becoming a children's ministry leader. Here's number eight. It may be the most complex and challenging ministry to lead in the church. But really, it's not that hard. When you grow to love it and you grow to love the kiddos, all things, I said it once, are easy. 
Often after a Sunday service, my personality lends to relaxing, going home, detoxing, relaxing, just chilling after a wonderful kids' church service. So lastly, I will share this. Be mindful to get your rest. The kids need us week after week after week, and we have to be rested in order to be able to minister to them any given Sunday or any given day of the week in Jesus name. So those are my eight things. Uh, I'm sure there's many more, but those are just eight that I'm bringing to you today. It was a quick, uh, quick live, but just wanted to get some bits of information out to you. Again, uh, if you take a look at the uh, pinned post I got right there is the Goofy Guns channel. If you would jump on there, uh, click subscribe. Uh, and that way you'll get more more videos and all that good stuff. Hit the bell to be reminded of them. But uh, we'd love to get more subscribers on there. But uh, just to be a blessing from the Goofy Guns, we are mindful of you. We pray for leaders like you. Thanks for blessing. Thanks for loving kids. In Jesus' name, God bless. We'll see you soon. It's the Goofy Guns.